I'd like to welcome you all to this event. Uh, Beth Deicher, who is no stranger, I think, to all of us, is going to give us a presentation entitled uh, In the Trenches, Fighting Against Counterfeits. And I'm sure you're going to find out about a lot of the work she and others are doing uh, to help our hobby, and, and we need this help desperately. Beth? I was talking to several of you earlier. I believe it was 2009 when uh, I spoke to EAC, and uh, we were seeing counterfeits uh, coming in. And looking back, they seem like child's play to, to compare to what we're facing today. As the title here indicates, um, we are in the trenches fighting the, the counterfeiters. And the United States is facing a, a tsunami of giant proportions from China. It, um, it's kind of mixing metaphors because I really think right now where we are is we're in a giant game of whack-a-mole. We whack them and they take them off the internet and then they're right back up there a couple of days later. I work with the Anti-Counterfeiting Educational Foundation. Actually, uh, the task force was formed in 2017, in January. The problem with counterfeits entering the United States had become so uh, unmanageable and just frightening that leaders within the hobby came together in uh, April of 2016 and they asked me if I would attend. This was a meeting at Central States. Later on, they had a summit at the ANA in 2016, and we worked during the fall. And the idea was to set up a task force to deal with any number of areas that we needed uh, work done in. And for the first 18 months, the task force worked under the Industry Council for Tangible Assets, but they decided to uh, move the task force and its work under a uh, foundation of 501c3 because all of our work is supported entirely by donations. And we thought if people gave money, they should be able to get a tax deduction. <coughs> ICTA is a 50136. Uh, so if you donate to ICTA, you can take a business deduction if you're a dealer, but otherwise you can't. So we set up the foundation in, in record speed, six months. We got our 501c3, and we were also declared a public charity, which gives us a little special status in working with government agencies. I spoke of the work groups. We have 12, and I'm not going to go through each one of these uh, groups. There are, uh, I told them when we first formed, these are not committees, guys. These are work groups because you're going to be doing work. And there are all volunteers, specialists, who come together and work in small groups for whatever uh, area they're working in. I want to point out one in particular the expert network. That was one of the first groups that we got going and we now have 90 plus individuals working in the expert network groups. What that is, we have people in strategic places, primarily near international airports and near seaports because when the Customs and Border Protection Service or Secret Service intercepts uh, incoming packages of counterfeits, they need an expert on premise to tell them and declare that the material is counterfeit, which allows them to seize them for 30 days. If the person to whom the package is sent does not claim it within 30 days, that material is destroyed. If they come to claim it and it's counterfeit, they arrest them. <laughs> And then we go through a little thing called court procedure and all kinds of stuff. That is uh, where we have had the most work done, but that is not to diminish 
anything the other groups are doing in research and education. Uh, we've done a lot of work with other world mints, particularly uh, producing bullion coins. So um, I will talk <coughs> about several of these groups as we uh, go through the presentation, but wanted you to be aware that uh, these are indeed working groups. There are 44 uh, people who are volunteers, and some of them will work 10 or 12 hours a week. Sometimes they might go six weeks and not work in a particular area, and then they work almost all week on projects that we're, we're involved in. Modern counterfeits are high-quality fakes of ancient classic collectible coins, bullion coins and precious metals bars, and they're flooding the market. I mean literally flooding the market. It seems like we make some headway, and then other days <laughs> I just think we're drowning. <clears throat> the new coins and precious metals bars are immediate targets upon entry into the market. One of the things that we have learned about the counterfeiters, they counterfeit anything that has name brand identity. If it has a high visibility, is a much sought out after item, they focus on that immediately. And one, a, a little aside, in talking with Customs and Border Protection, they tell me that everything that has name brand identity these days is counterfeited. Everything from the airplane parts from military airplanes to Charmin toilet paper. Some of you might have heard me talk about that before. That one surprised me because it, I would not have dreamed that you could counterfeit Charmin toilet paper. But they do. And so I can say with total confidence and the material that we have seen, every U.S coin since, since 1793 to current day, made by the United, United States Mint, has been counterfeited and is being counterfeited, including your circulating coins. Also, <coughs> the bullion coins, the U.S. Mint's bullion coins, Canadians, the Australians, South Africa, the popular bullion coins sold worldwide are all being counterfeited. As I indicated, uh, I think I came and spoke with EAC in 2009. Uh, Coin World had done a year-long investigation in conjunction with the uh, New York Times in 2007 and 8. And this article, it was a series published in December of 2008 that I think probably was the first time that people throughout the hobby began to understand how many and what kinds of uh, coins were being counterfeited. You'll notice on the far right there is an album that happens to have Chinese on it, but I've seen albums, Dansko albums. The album itself is counterfeited and everything in it. And you can order whatever series, date, and mint mark you want and whatever condition you want. That was happening back in 2008. Increasingly, the counterfeits are more deceptive. By 2017, we were seeing examples of like this American Eagle, a one ounce bullion coin. That meets every test and the counterfeiter brags that uh, American Eagle 22 karat gold coin can pass the test. What he means is there's a layer of uh, there's a gold plate on top, but this coin, for the most part, is tungsten. And they use tungsten because it's one atomic weight different than gold, and they can match the weight, the diameter, and uh, all specs that you would normally <coughs> use uh, for this coin to identify. The way we identify it's a fake is using the um, electronics, um, um, testing equipment. Most often, I think being used in the marketplace are the analytics, metalytics, I'm sorry, uh, Sigma metalytics um, equipment. And if you know how to operate it properly, 
I think it's probably the most accurate uh, a, a machine out there. The capacity continues to improve and increase. There are large scale operations today that produce, they will tell you they can produce 50,000 to 500,000 if you want to order them. And through undercover agents, and I've helped with some of this in engaging the counterfeiters, uh, we ask, you know, if we wanted to buy the gold American Eagles, like you were just looking at, how long would it take? Well, we could have 50,000 to you within 10 days, 500,000 two weeks. How do you get them in? Don't worry. We have inside people. And they, they send them through the post office, they send them through uh, Federal Express, all kinds of carriers. Unless Customs and Border Protection is looking for them, they sail right through. We've identified at least 15 large manufacturers. I don't know whether or not you can see those smaller images, that's inside one of the uh, counterfeiting operations that we were doing some undercover work uh, with, and um, they brazenly showed us inside their factories and were very proud of their manufacturing operations. And of course, they're selling online. I don't know if you've heard of Alibaba or AliExpress. These are the large Chinese online um, operations. Alibaba goes into more than 200 countries. So they have a very deep and wide uh, reach. Here you see them advertising the uh, cases. These are generic cases, but if you get the, the uh, inserts, uh, I think this, uh, these are PCGS cases. So we had one intercept where they were, they were buying the case, they were buying the insert, and then they would buy the counterfeit coins, all from different manufacturers, and actually assemble their counterfeit products here in the United States. This one happens to be from a... Um, a seller on. Uh, this one is um, a domestic wish.com. Anybody heard of that? Okay, this is from wish.com. It turns out that it's a Chinese owned company and it if you look online it will tell you it's in San Francisco. If you go to San Francisco, I've forgotten what floor it is, but it's a high-rise building. There's nothing but banks of computers. Everything that you buy on Wish.com is counterfeit, and, it, and most of the time it comes directly from China. But most people in the United States think it's the great bargain site, and they have no idea that they're counterfeit. This one is Amazon.com. Uh, I, last week, was uh, working and got a call from a dealer who has a who is a legitimate dealer on Amazon, uh, very trust, trustworthy <coughs> operation, and he was beside himself because have you, he said, have you seen all the counterfeits that are now on Amazon? And I searched for one coin, and ever since, every time I go on Amazon, I'm flooded with all of the counterfeits. What happened was last fall, I believe it was September or October, Amazon changed its policy and literally opened the doors that anybody in China can sell directly through Amazon now. So this is going to be a huge headache, and Amazon has not been very cooperative. eBay has been much more cooperative. As I alluded to in the beginning, it's the old whack-a-mole. If we tell them they're bad coins, they will take them down, but three or four days later, they're up on a different name. Mm -hmm. I think you might recognize this guy. Uh, how many of you uh, regularly visit the Dark Side Counterfeits and Fakes website? I do every morning to figure out if they've spotted new counterfeits. I can't tell you how important Jack Young and the people on the Dark Side and others are, especially to your specialized collecting area of the hobby. When we get tips and information 
like this, we can pass it directly to uh, mainly um, Customs and Border Protection because they can go in and find out where they're coming and often stop them at the border. Little side note, I know that some of you order some of this material so that you can look at it and keep up with what they're doing, how they're changing. Order at your own risk because there will be more and more intercepts uh, from Customs and Border Protection. I know some get through, but large orders probably are going to get their attention and even small orders because they are making a concerted effort to stop this stuff at the borders. I'm often asked, how many counterfeits are there out there? That's the $64,000 question. I, in my mind, it's the $64 million question. Nobody knows. What we see and what we hear is that it's ever increasing. In order to, for us to understand what was going on, we did a dealer survey last year and asked them, how often are you having people walk into your shop or either online offer you coins that turn out to be counterfeit? And I'd like to share a couple of those. Um, if somebody attempted to sell you coins of, uh, counterfeit coins of bars, please identify the types offered to you. That tall blue line is classic U.S. numismatic coins, classic collectible coins versus on the, the first one, the purple one, is circulating coins, and it goes on silver and, and gold, and, but it gives you an idea, the relative amount that's being um, presented in the marketplace on a daily basis. In this one, we ask about if the classic numismatic uh, coins, what types are being offered to you, and you will see that the Early American half cents and large cents happen to be the first on the left. It's that purple bar on the left, um, which is really large, uh, a large percentage compared to the number of people and large cents out there to be collected. That was startling to us. The one that wasn't startling to us was the Morgan dollars, which is the highest of the, it's kind of a fuchsia color or uh, they're the fifth one from the left. Trade dollars, again, the green one, uh, third from the left. That didn't surprise us because we're seeing a lot of that online. But I have to tell you, I was surprised by the early coppers and how high they showed up in this survey. This is the bullion coins. Not, not a surprise to us at all. The American Eagle gold on the left and the silver eagle on the, on the right to my, from my left. The purple and the blue, way higher than other bullion coins. You'll see uh, further down the Cougaran and then the other catch-all, mainly the other is uh, Chinese panda coins. But the American Eagle has a trust factor and is known worldwide. <laughs> It is the largest selling, the American Eagle gold and silver bullion coins. By volume, it is the largest seller in the world. Therefore, they're targeted. A similar thing with the bullion bars. The most counterfeited are the one ounce bullion bars, PAMP, and the Perth Mint goods. Those are the popular sellers, so those are the ones that are targeted. Both of those entities do have some anti-counterfeiting measures that they've come out with in the last uh, couple of years, and we'll see a, a couple of those in, later on. <coughs> Who is being affected? The refiners, the grading services, investors. If you're putting coins in your IRAs, Please have them checked and verified. Do not buy them online or from pawn shops. Pawn shops uh, <coughs> have learned to trust plastic, so they don't question. If you're buying that type of material, or your, your representative 
who buys for your IRAs, have that material checked. We had a case um, about three or four weeks ago where a man had purchased from, uh, or he had had his representative purchase from a local point sh uh, pawn shop uh, gold American Eagles. And for some reason, they took him out and were checking in uh, all 10 that he bought two years ago are counterfeit. So if you have them in your IRAs, have the custodian of your account. You cannot buy directly and put them in your IRA, but your, your custodian can place uh, bullion coins in your IRA. Have those checked. Unless you bought them from somebody that you trust or if it was bought directly from the U.S. Mint. Otherwise, have them checked now. Dealers and collectors and, of course, the public, the private and, go and government mints and co commercial transport and storage facilities, all of these entities are affected by the counterfeits and all of them have to be much more aware and put in um, policies and standards to check to make sure that the materials, for instance, the storage facilities, the depositories, they now, the major depositories check everything going in and everything going out for counterfeits. ACTF has, for the last two years, been working with federal law enforcement, Customs and Border Protection, Homeland Security, Secret Service, and the Treasury's Office of Inspector General, and the IRS. Um, it's interesting, when we went to Washington two years ago, Customs and Border Protection said, well, you know, and also Secret Service, we really can't be bothered with these coins because they're not that valuable. You know, we were looking at, I had on, on the table, a counterfeit one ounce American gold eagle and a genuine. And they said, Secret Service representatives said, we can't be bothered with those coins. They're only worth $50. <laughs> and he said, wait a minute, guys. You're chasing $100 bills. That genuine gold coin is worth 13 of your $100 bills. That was a revelation to all of them. And the first thing we did was to get all of the federal law enforcement agencies aware of the difference and actually got them to change their policies and recognize the market value of the coins versus what might be stamped on them. So that was, from that point on, we have developed pretty good working relationships with all the federal levels. We have done some work with state attorney generals and fraud <coughs> investigators in the Department of Commerce and some with local sheriffs and local police. The one thing that they all told us was that, that what they needed was help in being able to describe the material. Because the Secret Service, uh, when we started talking to them, said, you know, years ago we had people who were specialists and even went out to a and &A to take the counterfeiting detection seminar, but those people had retired and had never been replaced. So they didn't bother with coins anymore. It's gone on for about 15 years. So they said, when we have to develop material for a search warrant or a seizure, we have to describe the material accurately. And our people don't know how to do that. We don't know the language. We don't know how to identify them. We're in the process of developing a portal specialized for law enforcement that will, when they fill out their paperwork, what we ha are training them to do is to look at the coin itself. Okay, what country? It will state on it what country it's from, what denomination is it, what year was it made, and then we have a pictorial reference for them. Uh, all uh, typeset of U.S. coins, we also have the bullion coins, and all of that type of material to help them fill out the paperwork to go get the bad guys. 
This is uh, actually a photograph inside um, the Customs and Border Protection um, facility near Memphis, Tennessee, and you'll see there at the bottom are fake uh, American Eagle and the silver baseball come in. Was uh, the day we were there, they happened to intercept packages with those uh, coins in them. Our primary mission was to mobilize law enforcement to stop the counterfeiters and their accomplices, the importers, the distributors, and the sellers. I think one of the most depressing things to me is how many Americans are a part of the network selling counterfeit items. If the Chinese didn't have accomplices here in the United States, we wouldn't have a problem. But we have a lot of greed here in this country who will gladly set up business opportunities with the Chinese counterfeiters. This is a sampling of what we see uh, fairly often. These are seizures coming through Customs and Border Protection. I don't know if you were at the ANA uh, last year in Philadelphia. We had a five-case five exhibit of material, a small sampling of material that had been seized in a case. Um, and that person is awaiting his sentencing, he's sitting in jail these days, well, awaiting his sentencing, had the material that was seized been genuine, the market value would, would have been $46 million. That's one person, one person. And we got onto this case because a couple walked into a dealer's store in Pennsylvania and wanted to sell him some uh, Morgan dollars. Turns out he had purchased the Morgan dollars from a guy he had met on Facebook who said he was um, a part-time dealer but a full-time alcohol, tobacco, and fire firearms agent. And the dealer looked at the Morgan dollars and said, everything you have is counterfeit. Well, the couple was outdone and they said, well, we have another appointment in two days where we're going to buy some gold coins. Well, the dealer that, that they uh, walked in to sell these coins to happens to be a member of our expert network. <laughs> I got a call. I made a call to Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, Customs and Border Protection, Secret Service, and a full range of federal agencies. Well, they hopped on that pretty quickly because he was impersonating a federal agent. And we set up a sting operation in two days and arrested it. And then, of course, they did the, um, they not only searched the premises, but they intercepted all of the material coming in from China. This is an interesting case. Due to the amount of material of bullion coins from foreign mints, uh, the judge in the case created a special victims for world mints to uh, tell the court the damages that they were incurring from this one guy. And uh, he was supposed to have been sentenced February 4th because of the government shutdown. The trial date was moved back to April 25th. Somebody was sick, an attorney or somebody, on April 25th. The new date is June 6th. So we're looking toward that case, hoping this guy could get um, 18 years if he gets the full sentence. Law enforcement says if you get a third of that, it will be a major breakthrough because the courts heretofore have not recognized counterfeiting as a very harmful crime. And what we have tried to say to them, yes, they harm victims, they harm not only individuals, but businesses, and they also are, are harming the good faith that of, of United States <coughs> money. We have resources that you can make, uh, uh, you can use as well as we're encouraging law enforcement. If you have uh, a coin graded by the major grading services, you can go to their site and you can check the numbers on the cert and match it with a picture, uh, image that's online. You have to be very careful because some of these will match. 
we've begun seeing in the last six to seven months uh, images so good of the inserts that they will match. There are some really tiny discrepancies, like um, sometimes the um, borders, sometimes the printing on the inserts. If you have any question at all, call the services. Because if you take it uh, just with your smartphone, take an image of it, and they can pretty well tell you if it's genuine or not. But they don't give out the diagnostics simply because we don't want to educate the counterfeiters. Uh, NGC at, it, it's, at its website also has a great deal of information about the most frequently encountered counterfeits that they're seeing. As I indicated, the uh, various types of equipment out there are pretty good. Most dealers are using the Sigma uh, analytics machine to the right, <coughs> bottom right. But there are also more sophisticated machines and then some simple things like the ring test if you for gold coins and silver coins. Anti-counterfeiting technology, I am optimistic that we're going to have more sophisticated and more reasonable, in, in other words, perhaps collectors would be able to afford uh, this machine, uh, this technology, because all of these people, as well as us in the collector community, need uh, equipment to protect ourselves. The World Mint, uh, except the U.S. Mint, are, are working toward um, technologies to anti-counterfeiting uh, devices. Any of you collect or seen the Canadian uh, bullion coins? Um, you'll notice the what I call the lines in the little maple leaf in that close-up. That is uh, uh, in the coin itself, and you pass it through. Most dealers who handle these coins have a little device, and it instantly verifies whether the coin is genuine. Also, Pamp Bars, uh, they now have a, an app on your iPhone. It's not on others, but iPhone technology, and you can scan your bar and tell within two seconds if it's genuine. That kind of technology is going to have to come to all of our coins. Our current priorities is to continue with our expert network, education and training for law enforcement. Our first class for Secret Service agents will be held in uh, September. We have 28 enrolled. Uh, we're going to Washington, D.C. They have now figured out that they really need help, and we're there to assist them. That's what our purpose is. We're also looking at changes that are par perhaps needed in local, state, federal laws, to whether or not uh, we can make any headway to help the law enforcement. Uh, identifying the best available counterfeit detection equipment, and perhaps new things, new technology, <coughs> and public education, awareness, and protection. That's a big and tall order for a group that is essentially volunteer. As I indicated, uh, we're trying to come along and assist law enforcement. You can help too. If you have a specialty area, I, I know most of you are a specialist in coppers. Oops. So if you'd like to become a part of the network, or volunteer your time, or if you would like to donate. Uh, contact us through our website. Uh, we'd be more than happy to work with you, and if you want to work with us, we would welcome your support and we would welcome your interest.